Hi you guys. Now, does it really matter what kind of thermal paste you use? Well today, we're going to try and answer that question. Hi guys and welcome back to Back of Beyond Tech. Now before we get started I'd like to give a big shout out to one of the subs, um, Beach Boy Bodybuilder. It was his idea and he actually supplied some of the thermal paste that we're going to be using today. Um, and it's quite an interesting question. So does thermal paste choice matter? I have to admit it's something I've not really given much thought whereas I've given a lot of thought when it comes to cooling so the choice between something like that NHU14S from Noctua, a really good air cooler, or whether or not you'd go with something like this Arctic Liquid Freezer 360, which is a brilliant water cooler. The review of which um, I did a while ago, and I love this cooler. The link to that video is going to be in the video description below. But how much thought do you give to what thermal paste you're going to use? Well, for me, for years, I didn't give a lot of thought to it. I mean, when I started building PCs, Noctua was the company to go to. They still are, in my opinion, as far as air coolers are concerned. And so, for years, I've been using the NTH1 um, because I've never had problems with it. And, and, you know, I have always recommended this thermal paste to people, although there are other thermal pastes out there that are very good. So, we're going to take a look at nine thermal pastes that are easily available uh, in the marketplace today. You can buy them from Amazon or all sorts of places out there. We're also going to take a look at a thermal paste that is a kind of no-name generic brand and we're going to see if there's a difference um, in performance or if there's a difference from price to performance, if any, between these thermal pastes. Now, <clears throat> all the testing is going to be done on my X99 rig, so that's going to be on the 6800K at 4.5 gigahertz at 1.35 volts, cooled by the Arctic Liquid Freezer 360. The testing methodology is going to be very simple. Um, we'll be using the P method of application, um, slightly bigger than a P for the um, IHS on Broadwell E because it's slightly bigger than Skylake and um, Cabby Lake, another kind of uh, consumer grade components, but essentially the method's the same. You put about a grain size bit on and then you apply the the, the um, pump head or, or whatever color you're gonna use. Um, we'll then run the machine at idle for an hour on IDA 64 and we will record the temperature on the hottest core and we'll record the CPU package temperature as well. We'll then let IDA64 run and um, we'll do the, the CPU stress test for an hour. And again, we're going to record the core temperature, the CPU package temperature, and we're going to record the hottest core temperature as well. Then that data will then be displayed as just absolute temperature as measured in IDA64. But we're also going to measure delta T or the, the difference between the temperatures recorded by the PC and the ambient temperature. Now, um, this has been well documented. There's a link to Puget Systems article in the video description below. If you want to, you can go away and read that and it validates this kind of testing methodology. So by looking at the Delta T, we should eliminate any changes in ambient temperature, etc., etc., And we should get a much more normalized view of how these thermal pastes actually work. Um, I'm not going to be testing gaming performance today purely because one, I don't have the time to do all these testing so to test these 10 products is going to take me 20 hours just of testing and then additional time for you know re removing the arctic coolers pump head and cleaning it, reapplying thermal paste, yada yada yada. So we're probably looking at 24 hours worth of testing. To include another round of testing and that would push it well over the sort of 36 hours I imagine and I just don't have time to do that. Also I think IDA64 is going to push the CPU temperature to the max much more than gaming will because it's going to load each core equally at 100% and um, whereas as we all know finding a game that scales well across all cores and I've got six cores and 12 threads is going to be quite difficult. So without further ado guys let's have a look at those results. Hey guys, so looking at the first chart, which is absolute temperatures measured on the die, 
Um, none of them do particularly badly. It never goes above 50 degrees. However, there are a few standouts, like the Noctua stands out, it's performing very well. The Grizzly Cryonaut stands out, it's performing very well, as does the Deep Cool Z9. Um, surprised that the Gellet is lagging behind slightly, given the highest uh, temp on load of 49 degrees. Just considering the considering that a lot of people consider it to be a really really top notch um, a really top notch piece there but anyway things change slightly when we look at this chart which is measuring delta temperature so this is taking away the room ambient temperature so good to see the Noctua is still doing well actually doing best out of all of the pace that I tested at load only having a delta temperature of 31 degrees the cryonaut similarly does very well um, the gelid is actually tied in last place with the cooler master stock paste um, uh, the ceramic looks pretty good but all in all uh, all all of these pastes are doing really well all of these thermal pastes now i don't know if that is a kind of relic if you like of my cooling solution being very efficient but all these pastes, I would say, have very good thermal efficiency. There you have it, guys. After 30 plus hours of testing and restarting again when I replaced my thermometer to measure my ambience, um, it doesn't really seem to matter what thermal paste you buy. <laughs> um, yeah, so I tested all of these, a big pile of them. Um, interestingly enough, the kind of no-name generic stuff that was sent to me by one of the subs did okay i have no idea what this is um i am also very glad that the nocta nth1 compound came out best although you know mileage in this will vary depending on your killing solution in case and loads of different things i mean like i said this was um one run that's it i didn't do multiple runs i didn't have time to do multiple runs really um if you're looking to validate these results you'd probably have to test each of these compounds at least a hundred times to get in a normal kind of distribution statistically um, but yeah I would say I didn't see a massive difference in cooling potential um, in any of these thermal pastes um, so I would say does thermal paste matter um, not really uh, like I said some perform better than others but there was nothing that was terrible um, probably the actual cooler itself, I would say, performs uh, is going to affect your performance more than the paste you're using. Um, that's something I would like to try. I have a few coolers, but I don't have tons of coolers to try out. So I've got a couple of water coolers, like closed loop water coolers, and I've got a couple of towers, air towers. However, most of my air cooling solutions are uh, made by Noctua, so they're all going to be pretty good. I don't have any kind of low end stuff to try out. But that's the video guys, it took ages, I'm really sorry it took me so long to get it done, but it's done. I hope you enjoyed it, I hope you found it informative. Um, I'd like to say it was fun to do, it became slightly frustrating <laughs> towards the end, but that's it done. So guys, I hope you enjoyed the video, um, if you liked it, give it a thumbs up, if you didn't like it, you know what to do. Um, hit me up in the comments section or on Twitter, and take it easy, I'll see you again in another great tech video. Bye.